Did you know that you could change your life just by changing the way you think you heard that right? The secret to transforming your reality might already be in your mind today. We're going to unlock that power together. Imagine turning your thoughts into reality sounds a bit like magic, right? But it's not. It's science, and it's something you can start using right now. We challenge you to open your mind as we explore this incredible ability by the end of this video. Not only will you understand how the is works, but also how to use it to create the life you've always wanted. Are you ready to change your world? Let's dive in back. In the early 1800s, a scientist named Thomas Young conducted an experiment that cracked open a whole new way of seeing things. He shined light through two slits and noticed something amazing. Light can spread out like a wave. But that's not all over time. Other smart individuals figured out that light can also act like tiny particles. This mind-bending idea led to something called the observer effect. Here's the interesting part. This F effect effect means your own observations can actually shape your reality. Yes, you heard that right. You have the power to mold your own world by virtue of how you see it. So why should you care? Because this tells us something huge about life, what you focus on, what you picture in your mind, and the energy you carry can literally change your day-to-day -day reality. Remember the saying what you focus on, expand. In other words, the more attention and energy you give to something, the more it will grow and become a larger part of your life. It's not just about what you see wit. It, your eyes, it's about what you see with your mind's eye, the thoughts you have, the vibrations you feel, and the images you dream up, and your focus brings to life more of whatever you believe is true. Later on, we'll dive deeper into how you can use this knowledge to start building the life you really want. But let's clear something up first. When we talk about observing your reality, we're not just talking about looking at something, it's way deeper. It's about how you think and feel, how you visualize your goals, and how all this shapes your world through some thing as simple as where you put your attention, your attention is. Currency especially in this era of distractions and instant gratification. Every single day, your brain is busy thinking in pictures. These mental images are powerful. They activate this observer effect all the time. Indeed, when we communicate with others, Quality of our message is determined not by the complexity of it, but by the pictures we paint with our words that is a concept Weinstein, a renowned philosopher discussed in In His Work. But do you think the quality of your communication only has to do with others not at all as you also, whether you like it or not? Talk to yourself either consciously or unconsciously. That's why the big names in success always say things like you become what you think about, as Joe Dispenser wisely stated in multiple podcasts, your thoughts can make you sick, but they can also make you healthy. Therefore, whatever you think is what you will manifest sooner or later. Also, this principle proves why visualization isn't just some abstract idea. It's a powerhouse tool for transformation, in addition to shaping your reality. I threw focus, it's necessary to consider the type of energy you're engaging with daily. David Hawkins a renowned researcher deeply explored this concept in his book, Power vs. Force. He developed the Hawkins Scale of Consciousness, a tool that measures various energy levels using kinesiology through millions of calibrations. His findings proved highly accurate, showing distinct levels of consciousness, each with unique implications for your life. But what exactly does that mean for you? Hawkins' scale reveals that higher levels of consciousness empower you, more enhancing your ability to create an influence. Reality. This would make you the captain of your boat, or if you like. These types of levels will put you in the driver's seat rather than make you a passive passenger. The lower levels, however, involve more struggle and force. It's like trying to push a boulder uphill. For instance, living at a level of anger, rated at 150 on this scale, generates vastly different outcomes compared to operating from a level of love which stands at 500. Consider this powerful. Insight from Hawkins, the difference between Lev, else is not linear, it's logarithmic, so jumping from fear, 
At 100 to courage at 200 isn't just a step up, it's an exponential leap. Visualize an exponential function. First off, it looks almost like a straight line, but at some point the output goes up uncontrollably. This is good news as it allows you to tap into a myriad of benefits and blessings with just a few adjustments. In other words, this means that even small increases in your consciousness can lead to monumental changes in how effectively you can mold your surroundings. What this boils down to is ASCII, knowing yourself, through which lens of consciousness are you viewing your world? Are you looking through a lens clouded by low your emotions, or are you viewing your circumstances from a higher, more powerful state? Each level shapes your current reality and sets the stage for what you can achieve moving forward even more. Switching gears from anger to love can revolutionize your life. And here's why the energy shift between these two emotions is monumental. Imagine trying to capture the massiveness of the ocean in a single bucket. That's the kind of different... See, we're talking about if anger has been coloring your world. It's like viewing life through a storm-clouded window. But what about emotions? Like love. Love clears the fog and bathes everything in radiant light. The potential for what you can create and attract into your life when operating from love as opposed to anger is not just improved, it's transformed. This brings us to, to an intriguing concept known as shacks. Introduced by Hans Jenny Somatics, shows us how vibrations can shape substances like sand or water into elaborate, beautiful patterns. The high day are the frequency of these vibrations, the more intricate and harmonious the patterns become. It's a perfect metaphor for our lives. Higher vibrations like those from love tend to organize our lives more beautifully and coherently. Think of any occasion when you felt amazingly well, vibrant and in control, you name it. Everything conspired in your favor. Opportunities were out there waiting for you to grab them. People loved you. And of course you saw life with a high degree of optimism and clarity. So what frequency are you tuning into if your daily lens is set to lower vibrations, your life might feel more chaotic and less fulfilling, as if your biggest efforts were insignificant. However, by elevating your consciousness to higher frequencies, not only does your internal landscape transform, but your external reality starts to align more beautifully, as if God was designing the perfect setup for you to succeed. This is the power of shifting your focus from lower to higher levels of consciousness. The more you maintain your attention on these elevated states, the more life begins to mirror the beauty and harmony you envision, and focusing on what you desire rather than what you don't. Like can dramatically reshape your life. As the saying goes, energy flows where attention goes. Think of any situation in which you said you did not want this relationship to fail, yet somehow a situation took place and you lost someone you loved wholeheartedly. This instance illustrates that fear is a low level of consciousness, forcing you to operate from a place of lack and scarcity. On the contrary, when you felt enough and capable of providing a loving environment to your significant other, you let go and let God pave the way to relationship success. The trick lies in directing your thoughts toward higher levels of consciousness, which will allow you to attract peace harmony, abundance, and love into your life. It's a simple yet powerful truth. You attract what you continually think about. If you think about manifesting love and healthy relationships, rather than the fear of losing someone, you are directing your thoughts to the right place. And for those curious about expanding this journey, consider exploring the work of Tom Campbell, a pioneer here, still acty, very expanding our understanding of consciousness, his. Insights reveal that the higher you raise your consciousness, the broader your decision space becomes. This means more opportunities, less complexity, and less chaos in your life. Conversely, lower states of consciousness, like fear or guilt, restrict your choices, making life feel cramped and limited, as well as undeserving of something better. Campbell also explains that higher consciousness correlates with lower entropy, suggesting less disorder and more potential for healing in your life. He once noted, Equality of your consciousness determines the quality, the quality of your life. 
Adopt this philosophy and watch as new doors open, bringing more abundance and possibilities into your experience. Now, controlling your attention might sound straightforward, but it's of often a challenging task. Especially if you're just starting out without any guidance today, we're going to break down how you can start mastering this skill, crafting a plan that leverages the observer effect to shape reality in your favor. Remember that simply knowing isn't enough. You must act. It's not J. You asked about understanding the theory, you have to step onto the treadmill and start running. There's also another powerful tool that has been incredibly effective for many people around the world, and it can be for you, too. Let's call it the art gallery metaphor and exercise. This analogy is crucial because it highlights a common issue most people are merely reacting to. Life's events. Something minor happens and they respond with anger. What lens of consciousness are you using when you react with anger? You're observing through a lens of anger if something scares why. How and you respond with fear, you're observing through a lens. Of fear, you name it. And often people react out of guilt or shame, viewing their world through these diminishing lenses. The goal is to teach you how to cut through these reactive patterns and respond from a place of neutrality or higher consciousness, detaching yourself from the outcome. And even better. Whatever life throws at you, consider this when you react to every external stimulus you're at the mercy of these events. You're living at effect. However, when you consciously choose your responses, you start living at, because this shift in perspective gives you the power to create your reality rather than just reacting to it. And by using this art gallery approach, you can begin to choose your reactions deliberately, viewing life's challenges as opportunities to assert your will and shape your destiny. This isn't just a change in how you think, it's a transformation in how you live. Think about it. Very few people face life's twists and turns without reacting when things happen. Most of us get caught up in the moment, even taking things personally and one ring why me we react impulsively and by doing so we let life happen to us rather than through us or for us this reaction is what places you at the mercy of circumstances making you a victim of your own perceptions this is essentially using the observer effect against yourself which can skew your reality toward more negativity now remember what the ancient philosopher Epicus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it, that matters. This ties perfectly with the power of choosing how you respond to life's events by choosing your response, yo. You activate a new cause you set into motion, a new series of effects. Effects that can transform your life for the better. But let's go back to imagining yourself as though you were in an art gallery. The same art gallery that represents your, your life. The walls are lined with paintings, each depicting different aspects of your life. Some of these you might not like at all. Most people look at the unwanted art with frustration or anger. They might even yell or scowl at it. But like in any real gallery, you can't destroy or alter the artwork. It's not your right. But here's where your power lies. You have every right to shift your focus. Focus. If you keep staring at a painting you dislike, you're feeding it energy. What you focus on expands. Remember you're making it bigger, more dominating in your life's gallery. As William James wisely observed, the art of being wise is the art of knowing what to overlook. So if you return to the gallery and choose to focus on a different piece of art, one that inspires and uplifts you, you'll start to notice a shift. This new focus draws your energy toward positive elements, creating new patty. Earns and habits much like those who see the good things in the world. Despite all the negativity, you can direct yourself towards more prosperity and abundance. The beautiful realization is, as you practice this choosing consciously responding, rather than reacting, you, you start to create new dynamics in your life. Suddenly, you're not just a visitor in your gallery. You're its curator. You decide what deserves your attention and what should be sidelined. This shift doesn't just change what you see. It changes the entire experience of your life. Just imagine your seat. Oh, you're walking through your life's art gallery and 
Suddenly, you come across a painting that usually triggers negative feelings this time, instead of reacting. You pause, you stay calm. You don't let your emotions take over you by simply observing this piece neutrally and then consciously deciding to shift your focus to something else. You stop feeding energy to that unwanted artwork. It can no longer grow or affect you because it's not getting any energy from you. Even better, you might see that piece that brings back bad memories. Then instead of blaming G yourself or what happened to you, you turn it into a lesson in order not to repeat the same mistake and put you in that situation. Next, picture yourself in a room filled with Picassos. But you're not a fan of Picasso. You prefer Van Gogh. It's not about destroying the Picassos or covering them up. You're choosing to walk into another room, one filled with Van. Go. This is the essence of our, our approach. Choose, don't change. It's as if you're trying to change people. It's almost impossible or even counterproductive. However, when you choose the people who aligns with you and lifts you up, good things come your way. You see this concept of choice is powerful. When you understand it fully, you realize that everything in your life, every piece of art in your gallery, is just an accumulation of part energies. It's all the energy you've ever invited into your space, complaining about it, getting upset with it. You're just reacting to old news instead. Activate new causes, create new energies and new stories. So the next time you find yourself reacting to something in your life, take a moment, step back, Calm down. Recognize that you are the observer. Ver and the observer effect is always at play by choosing. Differently by focusing your attention on what you do want, rather than what you don't. You start making the positive aspects more prominent in your life. This positive, focus expands it, grows, it becomes more real. Meanwhile, the negative stuff. It begins to shrink to fade away until it's so insignificant that it might as well not even be in your gallery anymore. Now you could also try another powerful practical exercise that can truly transform lives. First, you're going to perform an audit of your life. Identify the artwork in your life's gallery, the things you don't like write them all down next rate each item on a scale from 1 to 10, based on how much it bothers you at 10, means it really gets under your skin, while a one means it's just a minor annoyance. This exercise is about raising your awareness. You see, awareness is crucial. It helps you catch yourself in those moments when you're metaphorically screaming at the artwork. Remember, whether you realize it or not, the observer effect is always at play. If you're reacting negatively, even unconsciously, your I, influencing your life in that direction as the saying goes, knowing and not doing is the same as not knowing. So take this seriously. Grab a fresh sheet of paper or open your journal today and jot down what you're resisting in your art gallery. Note everything and rate it. Many who practice this are amazed to see how their reactions change over time. They stop complaining about certain things. Sometimes they even forget about them. This is the power of conscious observation and choice. And remember, always choose. Don't change. We're giving you one of the most POWI RFUL tools right now. This tool, if used diligently, can significantly leverage the observer effect in your favor. It may also guide you on how to identify your dreams. Focus correctly and use the observer effect to bring those dreams into your physical reality quickly. If you trust the process and put in the work, you'll start see results. You've got to focus on what you want to bring into your life and then align your energies to make it happen. So as we wrap up today's journey through your life's gallery, remember this, your power lies in your choices, not just in your circumstances, every piece of artwork in your gallery. Every aspect of your life responds to your focus, your energy, and, and your attention. By choosing what you energize, you're actively creating your life with. That said, take a moment today. Do the audit. Rate your artwork. Start shifting your focus toward what inspires you, what drives you, and what fills you with passion. And as you do watch as the unwanted paintings fade into the background replaced by vibrant scenes that reflect the life you've always dreamed of. Don't forget, if this video I 
inspired, you hit that like button, share it with someone who needs to hear this message and subscribe for more insights on transforming your life together. Let's choose the artwork that uplifts and empowers us all.